Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about data field encapsulation in Java. And here is our outline. We will see what is data field encapsulation. We will talk about accessing private data fields. And finally we will talk about getters and setters. Let's get started. What is data field encapsulation? It is preventing direct modifications of data fields by declaring them as private using the private visibility modifier. So whenever we create a class, we will declare all the attributes as private attributes. This is data field encapsulation. Now you might ask, why would I want to do that? So let me tell you this. The data field's radius and number of objects of the circle class can be modified directly, which makes the class difficult to maintain and vulnerable to bugs. So have a look at this example. In the main method, I can access the number of circles attribute and assign it to be equal to 10 for example. And this over here will lead to incorrect information. And obviously we don't want to be able to do that because this variable is supposed to keep track of the number of objects. We want to change it only when we create a new object. We don't want to be able to change it as you can see over here. And we are able to do this over here because we are able to access this variable using the dot operator. In a little bit we will encapsulate this variable and we will not be able to access it using the dot operator. Another example. Over here I'm creating a circle C with center this point over here and radius equal to 2. Now what's important is over here. I'm able to access the radius property and assign it to be equal to a negative value for example. And of course we don't want that. We want to prevent the user from assigning a negative value to the radius, right? So this can be also fixed using encapsulation. So how can we apply encapsulation on number of circles and on the radius? All we have to do is to declare the number of circles and the radius to be private. Now after we declare them as private, we will not be able to access them using the dot operator. So let's talk about accessing private data fields. So as you already know, a private data field cannot be accessed by an object from outside the class that defines the private data field. In other words, if the radius is private, then we cannot access the radius attribute using the dot operator outside the circle class, right? So to be able to access the private data fields, we will use a getter and a setter. A getter is also called an accessor. It helps us to access the value of an attribute. And it looks like this. It is going to be a public method because we want to be able to access it using the dot operator anywhere. And the return type of this method will be the type of the attribute or the property that we want to access. And the name of this method is get and then we will put the name of the attribute. We will see an example in a little bit. Now let's talk about the setter. It is also called a mutator and it helps us to change the value of an attribute. It is going to be a public method and it will return nothing and after that it is called set and then we will put the name of the attribute. And we will pass the value of the attribute as a parameter and inside this method we will assign the attribute to be equal to the parameter. Now let's see an example. Suppose that we are inside the circle class and now I declare the radius to be a private attribute as you can see. So to be able to get the value of the radius, I will create a getter. It is going to be a public method which returns a double, which is the same type as the radius. And this method is called getRadius and we are using the camel case notation. And we should call it like this. Obviously it takes no parameters and inside this method we will simply return the radius attribute, alright? And of course we can use the this keyword over here. We can return this dot radius. Now to be able to change the value of the radius, we will create a setter. It is going to be a public method that returns nothing and it is called setRadius. It is a convention to name the getter like this and name the setter like this, alright? Now after that we will give the setter a double radius which will be the value that will be assigned to the radius attribute. Now have a look over here. I am assigning the radius attribute to be equal to a ternary operator. If the radius parameter is greater than or equal to zero then I will assign it to the radius attribute. But if this is false, this means that the radius parameter is negative. So let's suppose that if the radius parameter is negative, I want to assign the attribute to be equal to zero, all right? So as you can see, now we have control on whether or not we want to assign the attribute to be equal to some value. So now we encapsulated the radius attribute. It is a private attribute, we created a getter and a setter. Now let's talk about the number of circles. As you can see, I added the private keyword over here. So now we cannot access this variable using the dot operator. And as you know, we don't want the user to be able to modify this variable. We only want to modify it when we create a new object. And that is inside constructors. And this is why I only created a getter method for this variable. I didn't create a setter because I want to prevent the user from modifying the value of this variable, alright? 
So now this variable is only modified inside the constructors. And if we want to get its value, we will have to use this getter over here. And as you can see, the getter is also a static method. So we can call it using the name of the class or using an object. And of course, it is public because we want to access it anywhere. Obviously, it returns an integer, which is the number of circles. So now we encapsulated the number of circles. So let's see the previous example. Now, if we try to access the number of circles and assign it to a value, we will have an error because the number of circles is now private and we cannot access it using the dot operator. Also, if we try to assign the radius to be equal to some value, we will get an error because the radius is private and we cannot access it using the dot operator. So let's see another example. I'm going to create a circle object with this point and radius equal to 2. After that, I'm going to use the setRadius method of the C object and I want to assign the radius to be equal to minus 2. Since this is a negative value, the radius will be assigned to be equal to 0 because this is how we implemented the setRadius method, alright? After that, I'm printing C.getRadius. So I'm getting the value of the radius of the C object and this will print 0. And this is because we executed this statement over here. And after that, I'm going to get the number of circles using this method and I'm calling it on the name of the class. And this over here is going to print 1 because at this point we only created one circle object. So this is that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.